Um, good afternoon. I'm Wei Mao from Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, I'm very glad to be here, especially that my flight was not canceled. Uh, so this is joint work uh, with my student uh, Mingxue Zhang at the CHK, uh, my colleagues at uh, uh, my colleagues Sang Hong Li, Bian Li, and Xin Yuxing. So I'm presenting how uh, users click may be manipulated on the web. So we know that click is the most important way that we interact with content on the web today. Like for example, if we visit a news web page like this one, BBC.com, if we see some interesting articles, what we would do usually is uh, suppose it's on a desktop browser. What we would do is we would move our mouse over some of the titles of the articles, and then we would do a click. So normally the browser would take us to the destination we want to uh, go to. So in this case, uh, we're landing at the articles page, which is good. But have you ever imagined a situation like this? Like what if when we click, something can be wrong? Like for example, the browser still opens a page, but uh, shows you a different page that is not hosted on bbc.com at all. So. This is actually just an artificial uh, example I created that uh, how people's clicks may be manipulated on the web to control the URLs you visit. But uh, how about a real one? So let me demonstrate another one that we actually detected in our research. So in this video, a very short one, we visited we visit another web page. And we click on one of the links. So you see a new page actually is open in the previous uh, one, binary downloaded, and uh, in this page, the, the author also tells the user to type the password to install the binary. So this is actually a real attack we detected in our research. So we find that for a lot of this kind of attack, they work by manipulating the clicks a uh, user delivered to a web page. And they normally want to ask a user to visit the URL they control. So in this work, we are interested in detecting how JavaScript code can be used to uh, manipulate user click to insert, intercept user clicks to control the user's navigation. So let me give you a quick tutorial about how JavaScript can be used to manipulate the user clicks. So the first technology is through controlling hyperlinks, uh, which are implemented with the anchor elements in the HTML. So what they can do is they can modify the existing one, like this one. Suppose this shows the simplified code for the same article on bbc.com. So a link is usually wrapped within this uh, anchor element where one important attribute is called href that controls the default destination of your navigation. Using JavaScript, super simple. Get a reference to the element, then modify the href URL to one you control, and then the code would become something like this. But the value to a normal user is still the same. It's still the same. And if you click, the destination would be some one, uh, something different from the previous one. Uh, the second uh, way for manipulating uh, anchor elements is by creating a huge hyperlink. For example, you can have a very large one that includes a lot of content, and then whatever, in whichever part you click on this enclosed area, the click will be delivered to the same anchor element. And still, uh, performing this kind of so-called attack is super easy. Create a new one, attach to the DOM, and then you can, you can, you can like, uh, change the DOM structure in whatever way you want. So the result will be the same. So the second main technology for manipulating user clicks is through event listeners, which are actually uh, the functions that are executed in JavaScript when some predefined events happens. So you don't really necessarily need a, a hyperlink to cause a navigation. You can use a click event handler instead. Like for example, in this case, um, we can use JavaScript to uh, attach an event handler, event listener listening for the click event on this element, and uh, when this is clicked by the user, the callback function here will be executed so that the user's navigation URL will be changed. Um, finally, the, there is another uh, the third category of uh, technique to intercept user clicks, which we call video deception. It's a, little con it's a little bit controversial, like not all people, especially the experts sitting here, will be triggered by this kind of trick. Uh, so for video deception, the first thing JavaScript can do is create mimicry elements. Like for example, in this page, we have some first party elements already displayed here. The third party script, like a malicious script, can create uh, some other elements that video looks really similar to the existing one. They can even swap the orders so that it is better integrated with the existing content and the user may be triggered into collecting this part so that the URL, uh, the, the navigation URL may be intercepted. Secondly, they can also use a transparent overlay. 
So if you are familiar with click jacking, this is one of the way uh, people were doing for click jacking a long time ago. But basically, you can create uh, some large element uh, that overlays a first party one. So if it's something like this one, then probably a normal user would not click. But how about we change the opacity value of this element? So currently, it's 100% opaque. So let's reduce the opacity to 50%. Now we can see through this third party element, uh, but it still looks a little bit strange. People may not click it necessarily, but how about 10%? Well, now it looks like we have a bluish area, uh, a, a, a area with bluish background. Uh, some people, well, careful people may see some of the words here. But how about 1%? So if it's change to 1%, uh, then I think uh, this is barely visible for a lot of humans, OK? Um, and if you click, it would be, click would be captured by the overlay element, and uh, then you would be landed to a uh, URL controlled by the attacker. So formally in our threat model, we consider website a user directly visit, which we call first party website here, it.com. So the website would include elements that were generated by the first party uh, directly. Like for example, they can be parsed statically from uh, the raw HTML code. They of course can include JavaScript to dynamically insert uh, new elements. But it's also very common today for applications to include uh, content from third parties. So it's very common to find the third party scripts like this ones. And because they are all loaded in the same frame, so the third party script have the same privilege as first party scripts, which means they can do whatever thing the first party script can do. And of course, including creating new elements like this. So in your threat model, we think the first party scripts are trustworthy, but this can be arguable because for example, if the user directly visit a malicious website, then that one, that one website is already malicious. It may not be trusted at all. But uh, we think in, in this work, uh, the first parties are trustworthy. The third party script, on the other hand, can intercept click on any element in the same page, in the same frame. But uh, we think it's OK for them, for them to intercept the clicks on elements of their own. So we are very interested in detecting the third party script's click interception on elements not created by them. So to detect click exception, we face uh, several challenges. Like the, uh, we, we are interested in understanding the behavior of JavaScript. But it's widely known that uh, analyzing JavaScript code is a very difficult problem because it's a dynamic language. And on the other hand, some script can be inserted as an inline script, which do not have this uh, href attribute. So it will be really difficult to determine whether it's really a first party or third party script. And we also need to monitor the creation and the mutation of some elements, for example, the hyperlinks and also the script tags. But however, in JavaScript, um, JavaScript is unable to tell the initial script for a particular element. But however, in the browser, we do have access to an object called a mutation observer that allows us to track the change uh, of a particular element. But uh, still, it does not tell you which script caused the change. And if you want to watch the whole page, you have to create a notation observer for each of the element. Some people may ask, why don't you use a browser extension? Well, that's uh, possible. But uh, unfortunately, browser extension itself is also developed mostly using JavaScript for the case of Chrome. So it has the same limitation uh, as we described here. So to solve these challenges, we developed a browser-based analysis framework, which we call Observer. So by modifying the browser, we enhance the browser with the functionality so that we can track all the events related to uh, click inception. So use Chrome as an example. In today's browser, it consists of two important parts. The first is the JavaScript engine that provides the environment for JavaScript program to execute. The second one is the rendering engine that is used for loading uh, uh, parsing and rendering the content from remote hosts. In the rendering engine, there are several layers, and the two important ones are the JavaScript binding layer and the DOM layer. The DOM layer implements the APIs described uh, in the DOM standard. And uh, for JavaScript to invoke those APIs, like for example, creating new elements or modifying the href attributes, they have to indirectly invoke the APIs defined in the DOM layer through the JavaScript binding layer. So what we did is by enhancing um, the rendering engine and adding our monitoring code in both the uh, JavaScript binding layer and the DOM layer so that we can observe all these interactions between JavaScript world and the DOM. 
So let me show an example how we modify the browser, the Chrome browser, to, uh, for example, detect changes to hyperlinks. So on the top right, we have the sample code of the JavaScript to modify the href. And it's executed in the JavaScript engine uh, in the case of Chrome 8. So when this line of code is executed, uh, actually it would invoke a method implemented in the V8 binding layer like this. Uh, you don't have to read all the code, but the one important thing to note here is there is an implementation reference to the uh, anchor element object. And actually, there is another invocation of a method of this element that calls the real method implemented in the DOM layer to change the href attribute of this anchor element. So what we did is we first create a new method in the DOM layer to log the changes. And this method takes an uh, 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 argument, uh, which is this identifier of the JavaScript that is uh, doing this modification. To get this script ID, we created another helper function in the V8, uh, V8 engine that could return the script ID of the bottom frames, uh, bottom function frame in the core stack. Uh, of course, you can also log all the core frames in the core stack, but it would be actually a little bit expensive to do that. So for performance reasons, we only uh, store the bottom frames uh, identifier. And then, once we have all this thing, uh, we only need to add one, one line of the code here. So that whenever uh, JavaScript tries to modify the href attribute like this, or monitoring code will be invoked. And so worth noting that this code is not exposed to JavaScript, so there is no way for JavaScript to bypass our detection. So similarly, we modify the browser to support uh, the detection of creation of uh, new elements, uh, JavaScript objects, uh, and even handlers. So I will not cover all of them here. For video deceptions, uh, we use some ad hoc approaches like this. For example, for mimicry, we would first detect two element groups, uh, one first party and one third party groups. Then we want to find how really similar using some structural information, uh, like their CSS class name, number of media elements, the, the size and the relative size of the media elements. And then we try to uh, do a similarity calculation. And we admit this is not a perfect solution, so there are tons of better algorithms to do it, but this is not the focus of our work. For transparent overlay elements, we are interested in uh, finding if there could be a huge element uh, that would cover some first party elements. But however, we don't know how a user would uh, interact with this page and in what size of the browser window. So when the user is scrolling the page, probably some, the, the, the positions of the different elements may move. So we would actually virtually scroll this element vertically and uh, horizontally to calculate the overlap with first party elements. And if we find the overlap, the maximum overlap is greater than some threshold, we know this could be some element covering first party potentially. Then we would also check the opacity value. Like for example, if the opacity value is very small, we will label this one as a transparent overlay. But uh, to remember, so we will not report all these elements as necessarily malicious. We will only check if they cause uh, navigation when the user clicks on them. So we implemented uh, our system uh, based on Chromium version 64. Uh, we use uh, Selenium to automatically drive the browser to visit a large set of websites. And uh, for all the elements on the website, we would uh, click them automatically. But uh, to make sure we can finish all the clicks within one page load, so that the browser done with some other pages, we disable the page navigation in the browser. But still, we can log the URLs. So using uh, this setup, we visited 250K websites uh, uh, in the Alexa dataset. Uh, we were able to load 90% uh, of them uh, within the 30 second uh, timeout and collect some data here, uh, not very important. So the results are summarized in this table, uh, which you can find exactly the same data in your paper. So basically, we categorize the uh, results based on the technology, techniques they use to intercept clicks, number of cases, number of websites we detect, and the percentage. So we found that the majority of uh, click interception cases are using the uh, ways to modify hyperlinks, especially modifying first-party hyperlinks by third-party JavaScript, which is clearly an abuse of their privilege. We also detect event listener-based uh, clear inception and uh, video deceptions. But uh, to summarize, we find uh, 400 unique scripts on uh, over 600 websites. And uh, if we assume the, their visitors do not overlap with each other, then in total, they could have received 43 million daily visits. But of course, not all the users would have tricked. And finally, let me present some interesting cases we started, uh, we detected. So the same website, Magazine Web. So if you click, uh, this is actually one of the intermediary pages we were directed to. 
uh, the user is asked to watch uh, advertisements of uh, probably a fake Flash player. And the URL is actually controlled by a service called ADF.ly that provides some kind of URL shortening services. And if you visit the page, they will ask you to include the script in return for payment whenever the user clicks on any of the link. On the same page, the script also uses the JavaScript to uh, event handlers to manipulate user clicks. So first, user is taken to another intermediary redirect page, and finally land at the landing page. And you can notice that uh, this is actually a pop-up. The original uh, destination is open in another tab. So this is something Google claimed in the recent version of Chrome. They have already fixed this problem, but unfortunately, we find that this is false. For Mimicry, can you tell which element here is created by third party? Uh, well, I don't have the time, so let me just give you the reason to uh, answer directly. So it's this element that is created by DoubleClick.net. You may see there is a very tiny caption set uh, sponsored. So actually, this is a common practice for that industry today to show as in a non-intrusive way, so users are more likely to click them. And finally, we also have a transparent overlay that is invisible here. To visualize it, it's this huge pink element that is created by another added script. And we also see landing page like this that uh, the user is uh, tricked into visiting this kind of fake AV website. So users of clicking inceptions uh, may be exposed to malicious content. So to conclude, uh, we study a new class of uh, privilege abuse by third-party JavaScript. We implement a system called Observer. Uh, and uh, we find 400, more than 400 click inception scripts on 600 websites. And uh, we find uh, this kind of attack had been uh, used as a new way for committing click, click fraud. And the users may be led to malicious content, and we can actually extend the, the system to stop them. Thanks. I'm happy to take questions now. OK. So as before, use the mics, name and affiliation, and your question. So Yingzhi from uh, Johns Hopkins University. Uh, so very nice work. I liked it very much. Thanks. So I have a question. So did you observe any legitimate use of injecting third-party links? For example, I can imagine it is uh, like a translation third-party script, and it can translate all the pages on the Well, page. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course, a lot of scripts, the third-party scripts, they can be used for legitimate purposes. Uh, and it's very common today. So we are only interested if they are abusing their privilege like this one. So that's why we would trick a click really and check if the destination URL is a third party URL, not the one controlled by the first party directly. Hello, uh, Jeffrey Goldberg from 1Password. And the problem of uh, dynamically changing links is something that we and other password managers uh, will have looked at. And I'm wondering if you've talked to any of us about how we detect and defend against those. No, if you're going to ask me now, I don't know. I just know that we do, <laughs> or at least we worry about it. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, I didn't. So yeah, probably it would be nice to, to talk to you offline about more about this. Thanks. Uh, Swapnil uh, from Amazon. So uh, how prevalent is this kind of click, click interception? Have you, uh, have you observed that? Well, this is what we, we, we find from real websites. We visited 250K websites in the Alex data set. Uh, we only visited the top frame, uh, no, the, the front page, and it was only one shot. So actually, it's interesting that we find that some websites are, some scripts are trying to uh, evade this kind of detection. Like, for example, they have a script that is trying to tell if the user is a first time visitor, and they would set some timeout so that they don't do this too frequently to the users. But uh, yeah, in order, uh, in our experiment, so basically 400 scripts on 600 websites in this data set. Thank you. Okay. All right. The yes. next, thanks to the speaker again.